Welcome back to Beyond the Helmet. I'm your host, Steve McGrath. And if you're following on social media, that's hashtag BTH pod. Today, though, I'm here to bring you a special guest, uh, someone that I, I think I can almost call a friend for the, for the first time on the podcast. I have a, a friend as a guest. It is none other than former NFL cornerback, Derek Cox. Derek, how are you doing, man? Doing great, Steve. Thanks for having me on the show, man. Can't wait it. Can't wait to make it to your side of the country or you make it to my side of the country at some point and we go out and we grab lunch. I can't wait, man. It's going to happen one of these days. Uh, it has to happen. Has um, to. No, this is not our first conversation, but we're finally now doing this recorded um, mid-September, a couple weeks into the football season. I don't know if you're watching uh, any of the games collegiately or in the NFL, but are, are you paying attention to the landscape at all, or are you a little more focused on what you're doing today? You know, for me, I, I keep up with the scores. A lot of times I don't get to see the games too often, but in terms of being able to keep track of progress and what's going on, that's what I'll do. It, it, I, I find it hard to sit down for three hours and, and take in a full game. Obviously, when you get to some of these special games, playoffs, Super Bowl, obviously, you can grab my attention then. But week one, I didn't see any games in in its entirety. I, I, I caught all the highlights. Well, not even all the highlights. But a lot of it was just let me see what the scores and let me look at the stats to kind of understand who produced and how the game was won. So that's really my relationship right now with the NFL in week one. Now it's been a couple of years since you last played a game. Does any part of you, like when this time of year rolls around, do, do you miss it? Are, are you happy? You're relieved physically that you're not going through the grind? Relieved physically. Yes. I, I would say, well, not even physically. I, I well, there's, there's multiple elements to it. I think that this time of year you look at it and, and I just know the mental level of fortitude and preparation that you have to have and you have to go into these games with utter confidence and there's a lot that goes into it and I think that that is the most stress is dealing with that aspect of the game and 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 figuring out how can I handle all of the pressure the scrutiny the expectations and meet them because you're not really thinking about the fans watching, but it's 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 competitive, and you have to come into these games with your mind set right every week, or else there's a kink in your armor. And if there's a kink in the armor, good luck. It's gonna be hard to survive out there because they find it, man. They find it and they expose it in the NFL. So. There are elements that I do miss, but at the same time, I look at the pressure cooker that you're in playing in the NFL, and and I, I don't miss that aspect. There is a sigh of relief on Sundays where there's not this slight tense, uh, slight tension or anxiety just about the performance that's going to be needed on a Sunday. Totally. So... Being in that pressure cooker, though, I, I mean, you have to be able to take so much from that and then apply the best parts of it to whatever you want to do after. I, I mean, when you think about everything that you've gone through and just applying it to life outside of sports, I, you know, is there any particular um, anything you can put your finger on really as like what stands out for you as to what's been the maybe the the most useful aspect of, of being a former pro athlete? Totally. And just because I just finished grad school, I had to do uh, three years going for the NBA. And congrats, by the way. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it, Steve. Um, it was a it was a fun process. It was at UCLA. So beautiful campus, great student body, uh, great faculty and staff. And going through that process, because it was a rigorous institution to be a part of, I wasn't really phased by it. Like it really wasn't that difficult from a standpoint of managing the pressure, the expectations and, and the, the demands that are placed on students. 
And I attribute that to playing in the NFL and just being in the NFL, going through that pressure situation and being able to handle all this thrown at you, being able to meet the coach's expectations, handle the scrutiny of the media, uh, handle the demands of the general manager, owners. And so because of all of that and being in that pressure cooker, yes, you step out on the other side and there's a level of poise that you have in pressure situations and you can handle pressure and, and, and operate and function in it and not collapse and not be restricted from making the plays that you need to make. So it really does prepare you for the corporate world, anything that you decide to get into after this. And additionally, just the routine, you know, football puts you on a routine day in and day out. There's an element of just coming in early, getting your work in, preparing for the opponent, being over-prepared so that on Sunday you can execute properly and you have the confidence because you've done it. You've done the repetitions. You've seen the tape. And mentally you've, 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 you've elevated your confidence and, and made yourself feel like you can compete at a high level. And so having those aspects and, 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 and I, I take them from the game and I put them into my, my own personal life. And, and it's the same deal, man. It's, it's get up early, go work out get done with the workout, get to the emails, get past the emails, on to the work, finish off the work, you know, take a break real quick, get you, get you a get fuel up, off to the next set. And, and so it just keeps me in that routine. And that's the same, that's just how I see life. I see it that same way. It's just like sets and reps and watching the tape and controlling what you can control and stay into the routine. And you look up, end of the week is done, you look back, at your productivity and you're like, okay, we can win with that. And then we off to the next week. You know, I was so sure you were going to also put in there, make the play in front of you, which is a phrase that you had said to me over the ah. summer and it caught me at the perfect time. It resonated with me in the exact right way that I needed at that moment. Um, I'm sorry you didn't put it in there, but do you mind just also, so the, the routine, there's confidence, there's preparation, in terms of executing, you know, it, what do you think, um, there, there's something about make the play in front of you where it's not just executing the task, but prioritizing and doing what needs to be done. As you've just tried to navigate, again, life outside of an athlete, it doesn't matter if it's in the corporate world or not, but how have you tried to move about prioritizing things in, in making sure that you continue to evolve and move yourself in the right direction? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you brought that up, Steve. Uh, about making the play right in front of you because it applies exactly to this and, and staying focused and, and controlling what you can control and, 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 make, and taking down tasks and executing because a lot of times, and, and, and just, just to give everybody context, uh, tuning into the show, making the play in front of you, it, it, it can be broken down like this. And it's, and me and my friend, we call it 36 power because we look at a run play and if I'm a running back, I know my ultimate goal is to score a touchdown, but score that touchdown. There are levels of defenders that I have to get through in order to score that touchdown. And in life scoring a touchdown, it could be whatever it is for you. It could be a goal, uh, a target that you want to hit. Uh, some it could be some 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 money that you want to hit whatever it may be we all have a goal that we're going after and so when we get the ball in our hands it's about okay if I'm gonna get to re if I'm gonna reach this goal if I'm gonna score this touchdown I've got to first get through the defensive line and if I'm overlooking the defensive line I'm gonna get blasted I'm gonna get my helmet knocked off because is some heavy hitters on the defensive line. So I have to pay attention to what's right in front of me. Don't get focused on things down the road. It's like, what is on my plate right now? What's at the table right now for me to take care of? And let me do that. For instance, for myself, it's like, okay, I know I want to be a sports agent, a contract advisor. In order for me to get there, that's that's the goal. That's the touchdown point. And, you know, there'll be something else after that. But that's the touchdown point right now. But in order for me to get there, there were things that I could not overlook in that process that I had to go through first. And 
first and foremost, that was getting the NBA from UCLA because you had to have a graduate's degree in order to represent players in the NFL. So that was the defensive line for me. And it was like, okay, I got to get through that first. Now that I can have taken care of that, I can move on to the next thing. And everybody's like, there's something right here in front of you that you need to take care of right around you that you're like, okay, if I just execute on this first, that I know to take care of, it can move me on to the next phase, which is going to be the linebackers. Once you get to the linebackers, it's like, okay, this is another, this is another obstacle that I have to overcome. Overcome that obstacle, you get to the safeties. Same deal. If I if I if I would get past the safeties, I have to pay attention to them. I can't start looking at the end zone and high stepping. I need to pay attention to the safety and get past him first before I can score this. Uh, touchdown before I can reach this goal. So you have these layers that you have to get through and there's things right in front of you in the immediate that you can take care of and you know what you can take care of and that's what you take care of. Don't worry about the things that are unknown to you. It, they will come to you. I don't know what that I don't know what that cornerback is doing on the backside because I can't see him but I can see this defensive line this linebacker right here in front of me and if I navigate through them I'll worry about the cornerback when he comes into my vision. And that is how it is as we are pursuing things in our life. You get hit by various things, but you just have to focus on what's in front of you and take it one step at a time. And that's how you execute layer by layer by layer. I love it. I think it's a beautiful metaphor, but does any part of you hurt not having a defensive metaphor? You had to make it the offensive metaphor. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, if I'm looking at it from a defensive standpoint, man, yeah, it, it had to be when you get an interception. Yeah, right, you know, right, right. Get an interception, get down there, pay attention to what's in front of you. Now, I, of course, you, you just mentioned it, so it's a perfect segue into life today. You, you obviously graduated from UCLA. You got the MBA. You are hot on the path to become a player representative, contract advisor. Was there any question for you? Is this what you always wanted to do? Um, you know, what do you see for the future now that you are like – absolutely have you know, made some headway down this trail yeah so this really didn't hit me until 2013 and it was me going into my second contract and so just going through that process man the 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 intensity of it uh teams calling and trying to make a decision on where to go and in that process i just came out of it and i was i was intrigued i i because I, I really didn't have any direction in terms of what I wanted to do after football. And I had always tried to figure it out because I was, I was interested in making the transition smoothly from the game into the second career. And so I had no clue what I wanted to do, but when I had this experience in 2013, I said, wow, that's something that's, that's interesting to me. And so I've held on to it, man, since then. And, you know, a lot of my conversations, a lot of my thoughts, a lot of the notes that I take, ideas that I come up with are all centered on, man, how can I represent this player better? How can I represent the players better? And, and what can I do for them that I wish was done for me? That's the place that I'm coming from. How can I set them up for success on the field, off the field? And then when they're ready to transition from the game, it can be done smoothly so that you avoid the statistics that we saw come out back in 2009, 2010-ish, where they did the 30 for 30 broke, and it was stating that 70 to 80% of guys, by the time, three years, uh, by the time that they're done with the game, they're suffering from divorce, financial distress, or bankruptcy. And I looked at that, and I said, that number has to change, and it needs to be done with better representation because the agent, the contract advisor, he sits the closest to the player. He has the tight relationship with the player. He's going to have tremendous influence on the player. And if managed well, and there's mutual respect there, you can help advise players towards having an NFL career, professional career, professional sports career that turns into a success where they can go back to their community and still have an impact and return with the assets, the leverage, the notoriety, the, the, the influence to make an impact on their community. Absolutely. Um, was there anything, and of course, um, 
understood everything you just said, but did you have, was there like a specific part of your journey where and this isn't in any way to um, say anything negatively about any representation that you had, but did you have like a specific thing that in hindsight, like you wish had been done differently or a, a certain opportunity that you wish you had taken advantage of? I look at it and I say, there are just things that I wish that I had done. I don't even point to an agent or, or anyone. I, I look at it and I say, there are things that I wish that I had done while I was playing, you know, on the field and off the field. And I, on, the only reason I didn't do them is because I just didn't have the education. And so I could have sought it out and somebody, and maybe somebody could have came to me and told me, but I look at it and I say, an agent, if I'm an, if I'm a contract advisor and I'm coming to my players, not just personally, you know, in person, but if my email newsletters contain a quick tidbit, if I see something on Instagram and I share it and I just give my two cents, if I see something that, you know, I can tweet to them or text them, send them a text message and just add a little bit of education and something to encourage them towards becoming the ultimate professional. I say that's going to make an impact on the player. And so it had nothing to do with anybody else because I think that it's hard for these agents that never played the game to step in there and really be able to truly relate to the player and say, you know the why behind this individual and you know how to specifically speak to what they might be battling and facing both on the field and off the field. And I, I think more players need to become contract advisors, but there are hurdles in order for you to do so. And I think that that prevents a lot of people, but I'm not afraid of the hurdles. So I'm going after it. Cause I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I love it. Um, so, you know, just transitioning that a little bit into your journey, there's so many highs and lows of, from being on the field to, to get to this point. And one of them, something that I'd imagine would benefit you tremendously as being a, a, a new age contract advisor, you know, taking this into the direction of where it should be for player representation is you going and signing that deal with the Chargers. You know, it's that it's that 2013 that the big opportunity for you to uh, basically sort of cement what your football legacy would be in terms of your monet the monetary side, what you bring in, you know, what you're able to do on the field. What was it like, just in hindsight? Thinking about your career, you know, what that moment was and how it shook out. Do you remember you know, why LA, your feelings about it now versus, you know, back then well, when you signed the deal? Did you have any, any thoughts on it? When I look at... And did I say LA? It would have been San Diego back then. It was San Diego. And when I look at the whole process of going into free agency, because... Obviously, that's that's a goal of the players to get to that second contract. So if you can get to the second contract, that's tremendous. And for myself, it came down to New Orleans and the Chargers, San Diego Chargers. And so uh, between the two, you know, the same offer was on the table. And it kind of just came down to, all right, where do I feel I'm demanded? the most where do I feel that yeah I'll be valued the most and so I made the decision to come to San Diego and and I, I believe it was the right decision did things work out the way I wanted them to work out that I perform at the level that I know I can perform no it just didn't happen that way but uh what I had to go through man it, it really made me stronger as an individual man because it was hey I come up to the stadium and it's an it's it's an it's an it's an anxious situation. It's there's a little tension. There's a little you know anxiety like surrounding it all because hey, I'm the guy that just got paid. The target is on your back. When you get that second contract, the target's on your back because 
for one, you just took the place of somebody else that was there already that they had chemistry with, that the guys in the locker room had chemistry with, probably still wanted them there. And he's gone now, and you're replacing him. So they might even be wondering, man, why, man, man, why, why didn't why didn't they pay the other guy? Why didn't they pay the why didn't they pay our teammate that was here and, and has been playing for the team for five years and committed to the team? Why didn't they just resign? And you bring in this guy. So I'm being compared to him. Is he he must be better? Is he better than the guy that was here before? And so you have to meet the expectations of your teammates. You have to meet the expectations of the coaches. There's a target on your back. Then there's also the level of guys want to prove themselves. Like, let me show that I'm worth this big contract. Why? Because I'm on the team. And, and 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 my day will come soon too. So if I can outperform this guy that they brought in, me. And so there's a there's a level of competition that you you have to be ready to take on when you step in that atmosphere and when you get that second contract and there's a target on your back. So can you handle that? And me walking away from that situation, it's just like okay, I I I've had the ability to process it and understand that yeah, you're stepping into. You dump, you 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 diving in water with sharks when you come in there with a second contract, and it's 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 like hey, sink or swim or get eaten, and so you have to come in there, and there's there's the expectations and the performance that's going to be needed. Can you handle that? And 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 so that's something even I look at when I'm representing guys, you know, being able to have them mentally prepared for that. Okay, it's vicious when you get the second contract. Yeah, we want to go for it. But it's vicious when you get the second contract and you have to be able to handle all that comes with it. You know, you don't get you don't get the uh, the rewards without many risk. So it's very it's, it's, it's a risky situation. So what how did you get to that point? So many times I feel like I've heard you reference the confidence, you know, and maybe a lot of that came with prep the preparation that you'd go, the, the execution that you would accomplish along the way. But man, back in 09, where you're this kid that doesn't get invited to the combine, you know, but William and Mary, you know, I'm sure maybe some of the other guys are like, oh yeah, sure. This kid's going to last. How did, how did you get yourself in the position to, to get that confidence from the jump? Did you, did you come in with it? Or is that something that you really had to learn to grow over time? I'll give you a quick story. And, and it, was, it was 2010. So this is my second year in the league. And I had just came off a great rookie season. I just came off a great rookie season. I attribute my great rookie season to just being thrown in the fire. I didn't have time to think. I, it was just like, I got drafted all of a sudden, third round. I'm thrown in the mix. Next thing you know, they like, you starting. I didn't even know who guys were on my team. So, like, it wasn't like I was had the ability to be people because I didn't even know who you were. So, it was just like, I didn't have this fear factor of you based off of what the media has said about you or what stats you had in the past. So, I just saw you as a dude, a body. So, when I lined up against you, I just put the clamps on them. And so... I had a great, you know, come off a great rookie season, but I get to 2010 and it's my second year and there's all these expectations placed on me. And, 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 and I really didn't feel like meeting the expectations because in the midst of it, I had made football to be this end all be all. I had made it to be everything to me. It was like, I want to achieve this goal. If I achieve this goal, I'm going to have fulfillment. And I get to the NFL. I played very well my rookie year. And, you know, I make I, I led the team in interceptions. Uh, I make the all all rookie team. I started all 16 games. And I'm just sitting on the other side of it. I'm like, man, this is just football. And, and I wasn't really fulfilled. So when I get to 2010 and the coaches have all these expectations on me, Steve, I'm kind of like, I'm not even motivated to really hit it. But I'm not a quitter, though. So I'm not going to quit playing football but this lack of motivation it, it it turned into me having a a bad preseason man like a bad offseason and preseason we, you know we played the we played the the uh uh the, the Washington football team um we played the Philadelphia Eagles the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons every game stunk it up stunk it up stunk it up 
And I ended up getting put on the inactive roster. Coach Del Rio brought me to his office, sat me down. Hey, we're going to put you on the inactive roster. So I leave his office, and I'm like, man, I'm on the bench. And I sat on the bench for four games. Inactive, four games in a row. And then it was the fifth game. They let me dress. We go to Buffalo. We're up in Buffalo. And I'm just playing on special teams, though. I'm not, I'm not going to play corner. I'm just playing on special teams. I help on special teams, make a few plays. But then, like, in the second quarter, one of the D-backs made a bad play. And they, like, they threw him out of the game. They were like, put Cox in. My D-back coach comes get me, throw me in the, and throws me in the game. And I held my own, man, got out there and performed well. Made plays, made tackles, helped the team win. We won 36-26 versus Buffalo. And so from that point on, I started the rest of the season. But it, 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 what got me to that place of being, you know, motivated enough to start meeting their demands, it came from me talking with a sports psychologist, man. I talked to a sports psychologist probably about the third or fourth week. This is one of the things that, that really helped me. And, and also prayer, <laughs> praying. A lot of prayer helped me and gave me some peace in the midst of what I was going through. But talk to a sports psychologist, and he helped me understand the mind, the power of the mind, how you have to control the mind, because power over you. And, and that power can either make you prosper or can make you perish. And, and I was on the road to my mind causing me to perish because of the negative talk that I was having with myself, um, you know, how I started doubting myself. And when he gave me that information, I started talking to myself the right way. I started visualizing my success the right way. Day in and day out, Steve, I'm talking about Sunday to Sunday, I would have to talk to myself positive. Man, I can't wait to get out there and ball out. Man, I can't wait to get my hands on the receiver and dominate him. Man, I can't wait to make plays all over the field. Man, I can't wait to shock the receiver, throw him out of the way, play tight coverage, make come up and make a hit. I can't wait to get out there. Ooh, thank you for how you made me, Lord. I can't wait to get out there. And I had to do that every day, every single day. I had to talk to myself that way in order to get myself to the games and have energy. Because if I didn't, I would be zapped of my energy by the time I got to the game because I would be so anxious about getting out there in that atmosphere and meeting the demands of the coaches, the media, the fans, and all that pressure. So I had to talk to myself the right way and I had to, I'm Steve, I would do this. It, it, you know, it's on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm talking to myself that way throughout the day. And it seems like it would be exhaustive, which it was, because it's kind of like I look back on, I'm like, man, how did I sustain that? But we have to do that with our with ourselves, with what whatever we're facing, especially those situations that bring anxiety on you. And because I did that, I did that for a year, that season, 2010, man. Ended up leading the team in interceptions. And then I ended up uh, making the Pro Bowl as an alternate that year. So the mental talk, how you talk to yourself, visualize your success. When you do those things, man, this gives you the confidence to step out there and handle these pressure cooker situations. Because they're going to come no matter what. No matter what you're going after. If you were trying to achieve something, it's going to come. And you have to be able to handle this. So it's all about how you talk to yourself and visualize your success. Love it. Did you have to do it after that year? Do you do anything similar now in, in uh, you know, chasing anything that isn't football? I do it now. Uh, and, 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 you know, like if I'm giving a speech, you know, I, I, I preached the message at my church, what was it, two Sundays ago. And it's just a time to perform. I need to get on stage and I need to perform. You know, I need to convey this material and, and try to get it across to the congregation. And so in order to get my mind right, I, I have to visualize my success. I have to talk to myself and get me ready. I can't wait to get on stage. I can't wait to get up there and deliver the message and connect with the audience and serve them and give them exactly what they need. I can't wait to get up there and do that. I have to talk to myself that same way, no matter what it is, because we get these moments that step right in front of us and our growth is on the other side of it. Our growth is going through it. And uh, many of us, we will shy away from 
these things that create that anxiety, create that pressure because we don't like that feeling. We don't like the way it feels. And that's, that makes us afraid. And so we stay away from it because it's very uncomfortable. But as we know, it's on the other side of discomfort. Find your success and opportunities. Yeah, not to be too cliche, but it's like the journey is the destination is sort of, Mm. I feel like to an extent what you're saying. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. The journey. I've won, I've won championships. Uh, and, and so not at, not in, not in, not at the NFL level, but you know, just even in high school, I won championships and that was the biggest realization, man. I won three championships in high school, two in baseball, one in football. And it was the journey, man. Obviously the journey is sweet when you, when you get the victory, if you get to the end of the journey and it's, you know, no, you know, no, no hardware, it's not as sweet, but when you go on that journey and you get the hardware, you're not on the stage crying because the hardware is so beautiful. I'm not up there crying because that looks so good. I'm crying because of the process that I went through, the relationships that were formed, the development that, that occurred. And so that's what we relish, the journey. Now, you, you mentioned Coach Del Rio. Uh, he, of course, for anyone that's not aware, was your coach when you came into the league. Uh, Mel Tucker, great defensive coordinator. Uh, he might be the Michigan State coach right now. Uh, Michigan but, State head coach. Yep, certainly still doing it at a high level. Uh, you know, Mike McCoy has, has had success in the NFL. But even uh, in your stops with Baltimore, New England, um, you've had a chance to be al- along very successful coaches and that's not to dismiss any uh, coaching that you received at William Mary or, or prior to that in high school. It, did anyone in particular leave you with a more profound uh, sort of impression on you? It, has anyone sort of left you w- with you getting the most takeaways that you've been able to implement in your life, just trying to navigate how to continually find success? Absolutely. Um, I always give credit to Mel Tucker, Mel Tucker, as we stated, he's the head coach of Michigan State right now. But I came in my rookie year and, you know, Coach Tucker, if it, if it weren't for him, I don't know what my NFL career would have looked like. I don't I don't think I would have got to a second contract if it, if it if it was not for Coach Tucker. And Coach Tucker just really, man, took a liking towards me. I mean, there'd be times where we're walking off the field. It's Friday, so that's our short day. Guys are in and out. Coach Tucker pulls me into his office to watch film and, and just to get me prepared and just really to understand the preparation behind pursuing, you know, the NFL and being in the NFL and not wasting time. You know, he would tell me that you're wasting time. And I, it didn't, it didn't register with me at the time when he would tell me that he'd be like, you're wasting time. And it's just like, man, time is short. Like it's short. Like, and the NFL is so short. So when you get a chance to hold the NFL, it's time to execute. Like, like it's not I made it. That's not an I made it moment. It's like I'm here and I haven't made I haven't made it until, hey, I'm in the Hall of Fame. You know, when I, when I, when I'm in Canton, that's that's when I've made it. And that's after I've retired. So while I'm here, I have to get something out of this opportunity. And so I look at that and I say, even in my life now, how can I apply that? It's like, OK, man, time is finite and it can't be wasted. Like it's got to be execution. There's really no time for procrastination. It's like when you achieve the goal, like me becoming a sports agent, it's like, it's that's not that's not it. That's when the work begins. It's 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 time to go. That's time to hit the gas. When I get there, it's taking it up to another level and and really doing something impactful because of the guys that I'm working with and the impact that I want them to have on their own lives that's going to affect all those people that look up to them. So you cannot waste any time. And Coach Tucker was one of those guys that, that really helped me see, uh, you know, just – what type of effort you have to put into preparation and, and pursuing after these goals that we go after. So it's the million dollar question, whether it's a coach trying to reach 
that young athlete to get them to understand what is required now, or it's an advisor trying to reach their agent. Who's that 20, 21 year old kid that gets all this money. Now, how do you break through to a young man and actually get them to listen and care, really care and take in, you know, whether it's what they need to do financially for their careers, whether it's to be the best player I don't expect you to have all the answers, but what are we going to do? That, that is the, the million dollar question. How do you actually reach the people that need to be reached? Some things that I look at and I say, how do you reach this guy and really get them to take it seriously? I think it's, I think there's a mix of things that you can do, but really when you can see somebody that you can relate to, and, 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 and I'll say this younger players, we can't travel into the future. No why? And for a younger player, what you may need to see is people at different phases. For instance, I, I get to have a call. I got to have a call with Mike Haynes. You know that name. He's a new England guy. Mike Haynes, uh, he was, he's a mentor of mine. And, you know, NFL, 100 greatest players, Hall of Fame, you name it. Mike Haynes done it all. And it's great talking to Mike. Mike is somebody that helped me understand goal setting. And recently, it's just like, man, Mike helped me understand the goal setting recently. And having those conversations with older, older guys, it can really add perspective to your life. Because especially, especially these older guys that have achieved such great success in the career that a football player is in. And so I think that's a part of it is really, it's not about the agent necessarily saying, saying something. It's about, hey, finding that person that they can connect with. And I think it comes from generations down the road that can help them see into the future because we all we all can get caught up in our day-to-day -day life and not really think about the future and, and talking with Mike it helps me see the future you know Mike wants to live until he's 120 years old and Mike knows that he might not make it to 120 years old but because he's made that his goal it governs how he lives his life now. So the decisions that he's making, working out at XOs to stay fit, you know, getting on his nutrition, taking his supplements, staying active. Like these are the things that he's doing now so that he can give himself that shot of going to 120, whether he makes it or not. But be, and, and if he doesn't, it's just like, OK, well, he probably got an extra. He might have he might have received an extra five years. 10 years because he had that goal. And so it's not about hitting that goal, but he knows that, hey, I have that goal. So it's because it's so high, I, I have to live a certain way. I have to, because I'm, I'm serious about attaining that. And so that was something where I look at, even for myself, it's impactful. And if you can do that for a younger player, it's going to be tremendous in terms of getting them to understand. Because even I can talk to Mike about life insurance. Hey, Mike, help me understand life insurance. You know what I mean? Like, tell me about some of your guys. Tell me a terrible situation. And these just aren't conversations that a lot of players are getting to hear. The earlier they can hear it, the better. And I think the part of it additionally is talking to these players in college, in high school, before they've made the money. Because a lot of times you get the money and – it's going to bring out some characteristics inside of you that have been festering that might not be productive in the long run. So if we can address the issues early and start talking to these high school players, you know, especially these guys, the U S army game, it's like, Hey, you guys need to be talked to. I mean, they, I mean, it, it's not, it's probably not even too early to talk to them in middle school if they can have some frame of reference, but if you're a stud, you have to start helping them understand what getting to the NFL or playing at a professional level is all about. So that'd be my take. It, it always boils down to education. Oh, it, you know, and it's just how, how do you actually make the education something that's palatable and have it actually reach them? Um, and meet them where they're at. 
you know, meet them where they're at. You know, yeah. I, I, what platforms are they on social media? People put out plenty of content on things about finances and managing your wealth. And so uh, I think, yeah, if you're trying to encourage them, you also have to meet them where they're at and, and, and be on those platforms as well and kind of, yeah, share your two cents and see something that they can relate to because uh, that'll speak loud to them as well. But by the way, maybe if it was taught in high school, it would help everyone out. Just a thought, maybe. Yeah, I want a curriculum. Make it a part of the curriculum. <laughs> uh, well, Derek, uh, we ran a, a little long. Um, so I, I want to wrap this up with this little thing that I call the gauntlet. I got a couple quick questions for you, man. I hope you're ready. What's most important? Is it having the number one offense or the number one defense? Uh, you need to, I want the number one offense. I okay. Want the number one offense. Okay. Now, did you have a pregame ritual that you stuck to? I, I did. I had a pretty tight pregame ritual. It was nothing crazy. I mean, you know, I, I just had particular things that I wanted to eat uh, and, and drink to make sure that, yeah, I was fueled up for the games. One of my things was pickle juice. Pickle juice was one of my uh pre-game rituals if you want to call it but i knew hey i need to go into the game i think i would go into the game with two 16 ounce bottles of yeah i would go into a game a with lot. two 16 ounce bottles of, of pickle juice and i would drink uh i would drink half before pre-game and then half after the pre-game and then i would drink uh another half when we came into the locker room at halftime and then another half right before we went out at halftime. So I didn't want any cramps. That was something that I had to avoid. No cramps. Now, when you think about all the matchups you had as a cornerback, any particular wide receiver stand out as being someone that you either looked forward to the most or maybe someone that gave you the most fits? You know, one of my favorite battles of all time was versus Brandon Lloyd, and you had him on. That was one of my favorite battles. Me and him went at it, and it was mutual respect at the end of the game. Uh, and we came in, we came up to each other afterwards, talked, shook hands, hugged, and because of the battle, like it was a battle all game. I mean, uh, and it was it was friendly. Tried to cut me one time. I think he wanted to hurt me. He tried to cut me. He tried to cut block me one time, and I think he wanted to hurt me. But he was. He was a smooth player. I admired the way he looked out on the field, the way he hit his body movement and control. Um, his uh, He just had ability uh, along the sidelines to, to tap his feet in. So he, he was he was he was an impressive receiver. But I went into that game versus him. And this is when he was playing with the Patriots. And we had a duel, man. It was a duel of all duels. And uh, I can't remember if he scored. I don't think he scored any touchdowns. I did walk away with an interception in that game, but it was a fight, man. It was a fight getting off blocks, uh, covering his routes, and we both walked away with, with a mutual respect for one another. Now, I'm pretty sure something like 10 snaps into your career, you pick off Peyton Manning. Of course, you just picked off Tom Brady, as you outlined. Um, <laughs> Do you have any football memories in particular, that any one that, that stands out as a, that your favorite? You know, you mentioned the pick against Peyton Manning. It's the first game, I, you know, I had just found out earlier that week that I was starting in the game. And first game of the season, we go up to Indy, and they're driving on us. And we get down to the end zone. They think I'm in – Peyton thought I was in man-to-man -man coverage, but I was actually in cover two. And so he tried to throw a fade on me, but I was sitting right there because I jammed my receiver and I got my depth. So I was sitting right there and boom, I intercepted and uh, it's in the end zone. I intercepted in the end zone. And, and the thought that went through my head, man, was like, you know, and this is, this is no disrespect to anyone, but it was just like, man, if getting interceptions in the NFL is this easy, I'm about to destroy. <laughs> and that was just my thought, man. And, Cause I didn't get any that easy in college, man. Like rarely, like it was. And so I, so I was really shocked at, at that being my first experience. But after that, I just, I realized that they didn't have any tape on me. They didn't know of my looks. So for them, it was an all new 
look that they were going against. In the NFL, though, they study tape on you. And then from that point on, every interception, for the most part, was challenging to get. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I, I meant to mention this uh, when you mentioned Brandon Lloyd. You know, you started your career with Torrey Holt as a member of the Jaguars, too. Um, yeah. did, did, were you able to pick up anything there just with, with having an, an all-time great uh, come in and, you know, you just as a rookie, were you able to, to gather anything while he was there to, you know, pick that brain every day in practice? One of the things that I'll say, uh, it wasn't anything particular with football and on, on the field, uh, you know, from a skill standpoint, but the fact that Tory Holt believed in me really gave me confidence. Cause I'm looking at a guy that's Super Bowl champion. I mean, I think, I think he might've won three Super Bowl rings or two or three. And the fact that he believed in me and, and thought, thought that I was a good corner was validating and really elevated my confidence. So that was something that Tory Holt gave to me and, and I'm definitely appreciative of. What's most important, players or scheme? I think players, man. Well, it's so hard. That's a difficult question. Uh, it goes uh, hand in hand. I know. I know. It goes hand in hand. Uh, but I look at it, and I'll just give the the most recent example is Tom Brady going out of Tampa, and we see that hey, when New England didn't have Tom, it was a different ball ball game. Tom down, but we see that the player though. So it wasn't just the. He stepped out of that scheme and he went down to another scheme and and that player made it happen. So I think that's a great way to argue for players being the ultimate. I think you got something there. Uh, well, to wrap this up, I think it's the most important question. There's been so much that, that you've already said, but is there one piece of advice that you'd like to end this on for anyone that just says, hey, man, how do, how do I do anything close to what you've been able to accomplish, you know, so far in your life? Huh. If I'm given one piece of advice, what would it be? A candid piece of advice uh, in life. This for life? This for life, Steve? Or this for like football? I would say life, but if you got one that's really good for football, I, I mean, it's your advice. Ooh. You know, one thing that I'm thinking about off the top of my head is this right here. A lot of times we can, in life, people, period, we can almost feel like we didn't accomplish anything and you and achieved and you see them at the end, you know, you're seeing the, the end product and you look at your stuff and you say, man, you know, what am, what am I going to do? Or, or I haven't achieved anything or I haven't done much. We can do that in, in, a, in a day. You can do that in a day. You walk away from a day sometimes and you're just like, what did I do today? Like, what did I accomplish today? And I think we don't give ourselves enough credit for the things that we get done in a day. And, you, and, and I call it stacking your wins. And you have to be intentional about stacking your wins in life. Every day, stack your wins. Wake when the alarm goes off. If you get out of bed, you don't hit the snooze and crawl back into bed. That's a win. If my alarm goes off, I get out of bed and I and I go start getting ready. Boom, that's a win. And you need to you need to you need to keep track of that. That's one win today. I get in there, I brush my teeth. Some people some people some people skip that. Some people skip that. They just throw mouthwash in or throw a piece of gum in. I went in there and I brushed my teeth and, 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 and flossed or whatever to make sure that I have good dental hygiene. That's a win. Okay, I went and I, I put on decent clothes. I got dressed to look well when I step out. That's a win. Okay, I drank, the, I drank 20 ounces of water before I stepped out of the door. That's a win. I ate a solid breakfast. I ate a good lunch. These are wins. I went and worked out. I went and worked out. That's a win. I sent the email. That's a win. Stack these wins. Stop seeing them as little small things because as any anybody can tell you, you know, it's the small things that turn into big things. It was a small, Michael Jordan didn't become Michael Jordan, you know, by doing big things. It was a small things, oh, day after day after day. Kobe Bryant, day after day after day. Any athlete, 
that achieves high success is day after day after day, and you stack the wins. But if you don't stack the wins, you just disregard it, and you just see it as, oh, that's nothing. You don't keep momentum. And when I stack the wins, that's momentum. Today, got up on the call. I got up at 5. I got up at 5. I went, got ready. Win, win. Drank some water, win. Sat down for the conference call, win. Sat down for another conference call, win. Doing the podcast, win. I get done with this, on to some work, win. And you just keep winning. And that's momentum. And you stay confident about your day. And you stay confident about yourself that you're achieving stuff. And you're, and you're moving the needle. You're moving the needle. Stack your wins. That'd be my advice. Uh, great words to end on. I, um, man, I, I can't wait to do this with you again. And we can talk about all the wins that you've stacked since today up until that <laughs> point. Uh, Cause that obviously it's something that you were doing all the time. Something I've been able to gather in just a short amount of time that we've been able to talk over the last couple of months, man, as we actually wrap this up, where can everyone follow you on social media? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Uh, Facebook also. So yeah, you can find me Derek Cox. That's D E R E K. Cox, C-O-X. So that's Derek Cox. You can find me on all these platforms. Uh, Instagram is Derek, Derek underscore Cox 21. Or actually it's Derek Cox 21. That's what I am on Instagram. And uh, it's Derek underscore Cox 21 on Twitter. Derek Cox on LinkedIn. Derek Cox on Facebook. And yeah, excited to connect. Covered all your bases, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. Really glad we had a chance to finally do this. Steve, I'm glad you had this platform, man. I'm wishing you the best of luck. Continue getting guys up here. I think this is extremely advantageous. I plan on directing players that I represent to this podcast so that they can hear from former players because this is valuable, man, invaluable. And the more the guys can hear from former players and get their insight and perspective, the better. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it.